Hey everybody and welcome back to Q&A Wednesdays. This is my chance to talk to you all about holistic nutrition and just living a healthy lifestyle in the most realistic way possible. Today we are going to be talking about insomnia because it is that time of year again. Everyone's getting back into their regular routine. The kiddies are going back to school. Vacations are over. Anxiety is happening and people aren't sleeping. But there are just other people who have a hard time sleeping no matter what, even when they're on vacation. Uh, insomnia is a really big problem and I get a lot of questions about it. So I'm going to dedicate the entire Q&A to just talking about how to get a better night's sleep. So the question really is um, from this person who asks, I eat okay and I get regular exercise, but I haven't slept well in weeks and I don't want to take sleeping pills. So what can you suggest? First of all, I just want to say good for you for not wanting to take sleeping pills because they are not a good thing to take. Uh, back in the day when I was traveling all over the place, I used to take them when I was going to different countries and changing time zones. Never again, I will never do that again. Do not take sleeping pills. There are so many ways to get around um, having a better night's sleep uh, that don't involve um, chemicals and drugs that affect your liver and all the rest. I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna try and get through this really quickly because there's just so much to be said about sleep. For example, we should obviously be getting between seven and nine hours a night. I aim for eight. I love it when I get nine uh, and I'm okay if I have seven, but seven and nine is the, n the number we're looking for. I'm going to start off by just addressing that this person talked about the fact that they already get exercise. Obviously, exercise is a really great thing to do if you are not sleeping. So if you're not exercising and you're not sleeping, I would obviously recommend that you start incorporating exercise into your day. Um, but since this person does exercise, I'm not really going to be focusing on that. For this q and I'm going to get right to um, the first thing I think of when people tell me they can't sleep, and that is magnesium. Magnesium is such an important mineral for nervous system function and, of course, to reduce and, and re anxiety and help calm uh, the nervous system. Um, you know, even people who have restless leg syndrome and whatnot, often that's just a sign that they're deficient in magnesium. So I've recommended magnesium to people um, who have sleep problems. If you're thinking about where do I get my magnesium, Magnesium through foods, um, it's in a lot of whole foods, fruits and vegetables, but just think to yourself, anything that's green, anything that's green will have magnesium in it. Um, but that being said, to start off, if you have a sleeping problem, chances are you may be deficient in magnesium because so many of us are. So um, I'd even recommend just starting off with a, with a supplement of magnesium citrate or magnesium um, bisglycinate. There's all sorts of different kinds, but one that's really accessible, easy, and fun to drink is, uh, it's called Calm, and it comes in a little um, a round container at a health food store. And it's basically just straight up magnesium citrate. It's a powder, you put it in some water. I usually put it in some warm water before bed if I'm having some sleeping issues. And it works like a charm. Speaking of magnesium is Epsom salts. Uh, yes, Epsom salts are magnesium. So one great way to try and help get a better night's sleep is to take a bath because um, bathing is very relaxing, it's calming, it's warm. But if you add Epsom salts to your bath, then you're getting that dose of magnesium. And yes, it will be absorbed through your skin and it will nourish your nervous system, help calm and relax your muscles. So that's a really good habit to get into. If you do not have time to take a bath um, and you're into meditating or deep breathing, I would suggest just doing a couple minutes of that on your bed before it's time to sleep. So just close your eyes and, and breathe deeply for a few minutes if you can spare it, this will really help a lot. And then I just always obviously talk about sleep hygiene. We like to call it sleep hygiene and I love that term, but it basically means getting set up for proper sleep. You do not want to have a lot of light before you're ready to sleep. Light is stimulating to the nervous system. It also actually blocks the production of melatonin. Melatonin is that wonderful sleep hormone that um, our pineal gland actually secretes for us to sleep and that is not activated in the presence of light. So shut off your TV about an hour before bed, screens, you know, before bed. So your, your iPad, iPod, whatever it is, your, your iPhone. If you're having a problem sleeping, you really should try to reduce or limit that about an hour before bed. Start dimming the lights around the house. All that stuff will help um, get your pineal gland into um, the right state so that it will produce melatonin for you, which will help you sleep. A lot of people take melatonin supplements, um, but just a dark room is the best 
natural way to get your body to produce melatonin. So if your room isn't naturally dark, you know, your blinds are just shutting out the light from your neighbors or street lights or you live in a city, um, I suggest getting one of those eye masks. I use one of those every night. It's made such a difference in my life. And no screens in the bedroom. Good God, please don't do that. No TV in the bedroom. If it's in there, get it out. The bedroom should be sleep and sex. And that's all it should be for maybe the occasional reading, but definitely not TV. And don't bring your iPads and your computers in there. That's just a recipe for disaster. The other thing I would suggest is really to balance your blood sugar. This is something I will always be talking about because it is just so important for so many things, especially sleep, you know? So if you're eating uh, refined sugary carbohydrates before bed, you know, obviously that's gonna spike your blood sugar and it's gonna stimulate you, you're not gonna be able to sleep. On the alternate, if you're eating sugary foods hours before bed, then you're gonna be probably experiencing a bit of hypoglycemia, so low blood sugar, which then stimulates um, your adrenal glands to secrete cortisol, which will keep you up. So, so you don't want the blood sugar roller coaster ever, especially when it comes to sleep. So you're gonna work on balancing your blood sugar throughout the day, and I'm always talking about that in my uh, blogs, my website, so you can always look for how to balance blood sugar and I'll leave some links below. If you're just starving, you know, it's also hard to sleep when you're hungry. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you eat has protein in it um, because protein uh, will provide you with the amino acid tryptophan, which then gets converted into serotonin and melatonin to help you sleep. Um, so protein for sure. And uh, there's a lot of research saying that carbs will actually help shuttle um, those those amino acids to the brain so a complex carb so you know a good nighttime snack might be an apple with some nut butter or just nuts and seeds that that'll tide you over plus there's healthy fats in there and uh, it will help with, with so many things but you know try to avoid the sugary treats and the ice cream and all the rest before bed because that's not going to help you one major thing that a lot of people who have trouble sleeping have in common is that they drink a lot of caffeine so you know, I'm always talking about trying to reduce your amount of caffeine. I'm not saying you should cut it out altogether, but if you have problems sleeping, you should definitely not be drinking it past noon-ish. Um, so just have your coffee in the morning and don't have it past noon. And if you don't believe me, just try it out because a lot of people, you know, don't really make the connection for themselves until they do it. So if you're having trouble, trouble sleeping, no coffee past noon and see if that helps, I bet you it will. So another thing I would talk about here is to skip the alcohol because a lot of people actually kind of drink because they think it helps them go to sleep. And while it might actually initially help you fall asleep, it actually, once it's getting metabolized in the body, through the second half of the night, it will actually wake you up. So if you're having restless sleep, whereas you go to sleep easily, but you find yourself waking up, look at your alcohol consumption. I would suggest cutting that out if you're really having a hard time sleeping. Cut that out altogether and see what happens. And last but not least, I talk about um, trying to incorporate some relaxing herbal teas. Herbal teas are a great way to, I mean, they're warm, they're calm and soothing. It's, oh God, when I see people um, out for dinner and they finish their dinner late at night and then they're having like an espresso or a coffee or something, I just, I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, I wonder if they have problems with sleep. Probably a lot of them do. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you can incorporate just herbal teas into your nighttime routine. Ones that I would recommend off the top of my head would be Lemon balm, that's a great tea for reducing anxiety, relaxing, and helps with sleep. Uh, chamomile, obviously, is a very calming tea. And uh, something like valerian root, is, it's used a lot in um, these sleep remedies, these natural sleep remedies. And you can get all those at a health food store near you. And if you don't have any health food stores near you, you can order them online. So those are all my natural remedies to having a better night's sleep. I hope they help you out. And if you did like this video, please go ahead and like it and comment in the sections about, uh, you know, what's keeping you up at night or what do you find helps you go to sleep. And if you have any other questions about um, holistic health or uh, natural real food remedies, just hit me up in the comment section below and subscribe to my channel because that's what will keep this going and I love doing it. So I'll see you next time. Have a good week.